Today we're going to show you how to solder and desolder a damaged capacitor on a circuit board. What I have in front of me is a power supply that was taken out of an HP desktop. Unfortunately the capacitors were farther back in the circuitry so there was a lot of wiring that was surrounding them that I had to clear up. That's why you'll see a lot of this messy stuff here. Normally you're not going to see this. I never recommend doing this either. I just had to do this for the, the sake of demonstration so just bear with me here. I did notice, however, that when disassembling the power supply, um, one of the capacitors looks swollen. This is actually a really good thing to look for, as swollen capacitors can cause a lot of different problems. And because capacitors are normally one of the cheapest components on a circuit board, this would make it really easy fix depending on the situation. Not too long ago, I repaired a television set just by replacing three of the bad caps on the power supply board. Sure enough, after replacing them, it turned on and worked like a charm. Moving down towards the bottom of the board, you can see that the actual ends that this capacitor has will go through to the other side. If you flip the board over, you can see where those are. You always want to make sure that you get a good idea where those ends are because you don't want to desolder something on accident that you didn't want to originally desolder. So we're going to go ahead and find those ends, and they happen to be right here. This is where those ends are. So we're going to go ahead and attempt to desolder these ends so that we can resolder the capacitor back onto the main board. So to give you a better idea, this is where those ends are right here. You've got the positive end and the negative end. So now that we've figured out where those leads are going, we're going to go ahead and turn on our soldering iron. While we're doing that, we want to make sure we get all the necessary materials ready. So we want to get our flux ready, our solder wick, and our solder sucker. So while the iron is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the area with some paste flux. I'm going to put enough just around the ends that we're going to be working on. Uh, cleaning the surface at this point isn't really a concern as we're just trying to remove a component. However, paste flux does aid in the transfer of heat to the solder wick, which we will be using to desolder this component. So now our soldering iron is heated up and ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to mount solder to the iron and we're doing this so that we have an easier way to transfer heat directly onto the end that we're trying to desolder as this will aid again in the transfer of heat and the quicker we can do that the quicker this will work. So we're going to go ahead and touch the solder wick to the area in which we want to desolder we're going to touch the soldering iron on the opposite end in order to heat up the wick and in turn suck up all the solder that's holding this component in place. So sometimes it's a little bit more difficult given the, the solder that was used and the placing of the component. Sometimes you got to get around there a little bit more. Uh, other times you can just place it right on there and it'll all get wicked right up. Those are the kind of repairs that we like, as it involves less work. So it looks like this end actually came out very, very well. Um, we're going to go ahead and move over to the other one now. So what we're going to do is we're going to tin the tip of our iron again. I'm going to see if I can turn this towards the camera so you can get a better idea. So I'm going to go ahead and angle this outward. I'll go ahead and place it right there. Then I'll place the tip right up against it. See if we can't wick away some of that solder. And you know, if it doesn't work, you try something else. So not everything is gonna, you know, be a, a guaranteed fix. So sometimes you use the wick, other times you use the solder sucker, um, or even the air compressor, like I mentioned before. But just be conscious of the um, when using the air compressor because you're you're gonna be spraying molten solder all over the place but it does work nonetheless okay so it looks like that end also got cleaned up very well also so we're gonna what we gotta do now is we gotta clip the end of the solder wick as it can no longer be used we wanna free up um, some clean solder wick like we have here so now we're gonna clean the tip off of our iron then we're gonna take some rubbing alcohol and just a small piece of paper towel. We're going to clean up the surface. So 
So we're just going to clean up that surface there. We want to make sure that the surface is clean so that when we go ahead and solder the capacitor back on, we don't have to worry about all the gunk that's on there. Not only that, but it also helps you see exactly what kind of work was done because you don't have to worry about all the the dirty flux that's in the in the area. So we're just going to clean this up a little bit more just so we can see exactly how that went. By the looks of it, it looks like it went pretty good actually. So all right, so now you can see that the solder has actually been more or less cleaned up. Um, you have one of the ends here and then the other one is over here. So if we go towards the bottom, the actual capacitor should be able to wiggle out here. So let me go ahead and see if I can do that. You just want to be careful because you never want to put too much pressure on these things because you don't want to damage the actual ends. So it looks like one of the ends is freer than the other one. So a good thing you can do in this case is you can take your iron and touch one of the ends that is uh, stuck in there to get it heated up a little bit. What you're doing is you're, you're going to be melting the solder to a liquid state so you can then, so it's free. So you can then pull it through just like that. And as you can see the capacitor was pulled through. There was no damage done to the capacitor or the board. So now we're going to go ahead and put it back in.